Today I've got two fabulous ideas for creating pop-up cards and if you hang around to the end I've also got a bonus card to share with you. I'm going to start with a base card pop-up. This is really easy to do and you don't need any special dies. Starting with three pieces of cardstock and you don't have to remember all the sizes of the cardstock because I will have them written down at my blog post and you can find that linked in the description below. But this main piece of cardstock is actually cut six and a half by four inches and scored at one inch at either end. And I've also got two strips of cardstock cut five inches long. One of them is one inch wide and the other is three quarters of an inch wide but you can actually change this up to suit your project it depending on what images and how you want to decorate your card. Both of those have been scored at a quarter inch at each end and I am using a bone folder here just to burnish those folds to make sure they're nice and crisp. You can use your thumbnail or um, just a ruler if you don't have one of these. Now this is totally optional. I decided to cut a triangle off each of the corners of the card just to add a little bit of a decorative edge. And if you had like a um, punch, an edge punch, you could even do it with one of those to add a bit of a pattern if you wanted to. I've also decided to add a piece of design paper to the base of my card. You can stamp a scene if you wanted or actually create the base card out of colored cardstock. I just thought it'd be fun to add this really pretty striped pink and white cardstock. I also wanted to add some color to my tabs that are going inside the card base. So I have cut those just to cover the front. I didn't use them to create the actual strips because I didn't think they'd be quite sturdy enough. But you could do that if you had a nice sturdy cardstock. Now to assemble the card I want to use a nice strong adhesive so I'm using some wonder tape it's a quarter inch and that fits perfectly on the tabs that I've created but you could also use a liquid glue. These are going to be moving parts so you want to make sure that it's a nice got a nice strong hold. Now the thinner strip is the one I'm going to adhere first and I want this to sort of sit along the edge of the card so I'm joining it exactly where that edge is going to fold. My second wider strip, I'm actually going to place that about in the center between where the first one is adhered and where the fold for the back of the card will be. And then I'm going to join my strips of cardstock to the other side and I'm going to make sure that that center piece is about the same distance from the base of the card that it was on the opposite side. And of course the front one adheres directly to the very front portion of the card and you can decorate this however you please. <laughs> How easy is that? It's so much fun and it fits in a regular A2 envelope and folds flat so it will be easy to post. Now I've got a few little fun decorations that I'm using today. I've already colored up some images from a penny black set of stamps and I've got the coordinating dies as well and it's called It's Your Day. I've also done some layer stamping and added a few big cupcakes. I thought these mice <laughs> would like some big cupcakes to celebrate this birthday party with. And that's from a, a quite an old set now from Altenew uh, called Layered Cupcake. I've also added a heat boss sentiment speech bubble from Soak It Up and Heart Eyes. And one thing to be aware of, you do not want to add too much bulk. So... I did pop up a couple of these images but I only used a really thin foam tape otherwise they're adhered directly to the card. Are you ready for our second card? We're going to be doing a wiper card and it needs three pieces of cardstock. So the base cardstock or the blue piece is four and a quarter by eight and a half and this front piece here is two inches by eight and a half inches. Now I didn't want to muck around with design paper for this particular card so I did actually come in and stamp my own pattern. It's a skinny stripe pattern over the cardstock itself and I did do it on an angle that's why it's looking a little bit weird there but you could certainly use some design paper on top instead if that's what you wanted to do. So we need to score both of these pieces of cardstock twice. The large piece here I am making a tick mark at the seven inch mark and you'll see why shortly but it needs to be scored twice. So the first score is at five and a half inches 
and the second score is at seven but on this particular scoreboard it doesn't go that far so by having that tick mark on the cardstock I can just lean it up against the top of the scoreboard and score my line. This second of the two inch piece of cardstock it gets scored twice as well at one and a half inches and again at three. Now this small piece of cardstock that I've got here is the bit that makes the wiper mechanism. So it's two by nearly an inch <laughs> and I've done a couple of tick marks at th the three quarter inch mark from each end. Now I want to score this twice but on an angle. So where I've made that tick mark to the corner of the cardstock that's where I'm going to score it. You could just fold it if you wanted to if you didn't have a scoreboard. It just makes this heavyweight cardstock fold easier by doing that scoring on the cardstock. So I've scored to both corners and then I do want to burnish all of these because I want the mechanism to be you know work really well and have those nice crisp edges and fold easily. So I am using my bone folder again here to burnish all of those edges. I have now folded in my corners on the wiper mechanism here. I'm going to use a really strong tape again. I've got the wonder tape again and on the left V, so I've got the V facing up, I'm going to put some of the tape on each side of that score line. This is where my piece of acetate or where my mechanism is going to be joined to. So on the opposite side of the cardstock, on the outside of the triangle, I'm going to add some strong liquid adhesive or here I'm using the wonder tape again to make sure that that's going to have a really good hold because this is the piece that's going to be adhered directly to my card base and help the moving mechanism. Now this is the front piece of the cardstock. I'm basically going to flip this over because I want to join the mechanism to this card base on that first fold. At the top of the fold, so I'm just going to remove my tape and then align the scored line with the edge of that mechanism. And then I'll just press it nice and hard to make sure I get a good adhesive. So on the opposite side where these two pieces of score tape are, this is where I'm going to connect my image that I want to come out as a pop-up in the card. I do struggle a little bit to get this right the first time, always, but it is just a matter of playing with it until you're happy with how your image is sitting and popping up with the wiper mechanism. I've got a piece of acetate here that I'm going to join my image to because I am having it popping up in the sky so you're going to be able to see beneath um, that but you could easily use a piece of cardstock instead depending on what you're popping up and how big it is. A couple of things to be aware of is the size of the image that you're wanting to pop up so that it doesn't it needs to be able to fit behind this front piece of cardstock so be hidden but also when you open up the mechanism that it's not going to be too big that it won't um, that it won't open properly either. I did die cut a second piece of white cardstock so that I could um, just cover the back of that as well. To attach the front piece of cardstock I'm just adding some score tape to both ends and then just simply adhering my smaller piece of cardstock to the base of the card that I created. I'm going to decorate it again with all my little bits and pieces. Like I said I did make a ton of images and cupcakes here and I might as well use them. And I did use this same sentiment but this time I didn't heat emboss I just did it on some white cardstock. And I made sure that I've sat the sentiment so that when the wiper mechanism happens that it looks like the little mouse is saying let's party but when the whole card is closed it looks like the little mouse sitting on the cupcake is saying that. So how cool is that? <laughs> it's a really, it looks hard but it's actually a really easy and fun card to make. And like I said I did have a lot of images ready to go so what do I do? I have two extra cupcakes to use. I want to make another quick pop-up card 
and this one's the most simple of the bunch. I'm doing some stamping both on the front of the card and on the inside of the card here. I've popped up one of the cupcakes on the front of the card but the image on the center is going to get an action wobble. Yes. <laughs> Did you guess it? Did you guess today's bonus technique? It's using an action wobble to pop up an image on the inside of a card. I normally would use this on the front of a card, but how fun is it to put one on the inside and they fold, like they push in quite flat too. So they're not too bulky when if you do want to post this card. I always put the clear side of the action wobble on the base of the card. So if someone peeks around the corner, they don't see too much of the mechanism. But how cool is that? <laughs> what would you do with your leftover cupcakes? Now I want to show you all the cards and the mechanisms. So this is my pop-up card base. And that folds down to an A2 size, the same as this one here. This is the wiper mechanism card. <laughs> It does make me giggle, that little mouse flying through the sky trying to get to his cupcake. And my leftover cupcake says no one ever with the action wobble. And if you did enjoy today's pop-up cards, hang around now because I've actually got another video with three more ideas using no fancy tools whatsoever. And I've also got a second interactive card video to share with you here. If you enjoyed these videos, please click on the thumbs up button to let me know that you did. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? It's totally free. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you again here real soon. Till next time, happy paper crafting. Bye.